This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for September 7, 2023, St. Anne Man charged for shooting at police during carjacking attempt. A man accused of attempting to hijack the private motor vehicle of a senior officer in the Jamaica Constabulary Force in St. Anne has been charged. He is 26-year-old Omar Thomas, a taxi operator of Harrison Town in the parish. He was charged on the weekend with a shooting with intent, illegal possession of prohibited weapon, unauthorized the possession of ammunition, and using a firearm to commit a felony. Investigators reported that on August 19, about 3 a.m., the senior cop was driving home when a motor car with armed thugs aboard blocked his vehicle along the Iron Mountain Main Road. The men identified themselves as police officers, but the deputy superintendent realized that he was being confronted by criminals and this led to a gun battle. The men sped off, but the vehicle later crashed after Thomas, who was the driver, was shot in the chest. He was captured while the other suspects escaped. Investigators say the men were on a robbery spree as the vehicle in which they were traveling had previously been reported stolen. Senior Citizen Dies in Runaway Bay Crash A senior citizen died Wednesday morning after his vehicle collided with another on the Runaway Bay Main Road in St. Anne. The deceased is 79-year-old Leslie Roy Wright of a Discovery Bay address. Assistant Superintendent Patrick Robinson of the St. Anne's Bay Fire Department said the brigade was alerted to the crash about 11.30 a.m. Mr. Wright, who was pinned in the vehicle, was eventually removed by the fire department and taken to St. Anne's Bay Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Three other people involved in the two-vehicle collision were transported to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The police are still investigating the cause of the crash. At 11.33 a.m., we received a uh, this call of a motor vehicle collision along the Runaway Bay main road. On arrival, we observed two vehicles that were involved in the accident. We extricate one person from one of the vehicles, a male, who was unresponsive. He was removed by the fire department and placed on a stretcher and was uh, removed to the St. Anne's Bay Hospital by the undertaker. Well, we are not able to ascertain what really happened. We only learned that there was a motor vehicle accident and we responded to the call. Um, the police are also on the scene carrying out their investigation. Commuters told to brace for fare increase. Commuters are being alerted to brace for an increase in taxi and the bus fares. Transport Minister Darrell Vaz said he is in receipt of a report from the Public Passenger Vehicle Steering Committee, which has been deliberating on fare adjustments for the transport sector. Mr. Vaz made the disclosure during a post cabinet press briefing Wednesday morning at the Jamaica House. He said that the report will be discussed immediately and brought it to Cabinet in short order once reviewed. I have not read, but I have received uh, in my Absom office yesterday the steering committee's report on the fare increases, which will be discussed internally and, of course, taken to Cabinet in short order once we review. So again, just to let you know that the issues that confront the transport sector and have done so for many years, if not decades, are being dealt with seriously. And the fact of the matter, whether it is good news or bad news, depending on what side of the transport sector you sit on, we are going to deal with them in an upfront manner, transparent, and of course make sure as best as possible that there is consensus. Meanwhile, Edgerton Newman, president of the Transport Operators Development Sustainable Services, has said that transport operators are expecting an announcement by the government of a fare increase before the end of this month. He said that TONS and other transport groups have been lobbying for a fare adjustment over the last several years and are happy that an increase could come soon. He has now received that recommendation, and uh, we are not too sure what is going to be the outcome, but I know in short order the public transport sector will be receiving a fair adjustment, and we are happy for this. This is the way for us now to 
prepare ourselves to provide the best quality service for our, our the community in public. I told the minister, and uh, this is coming from Todd, we said we need it for September morning. We knew we would not get it for September morning, but as ASAP right after, and it seemed to me that within the next couple of weeks, of course, the public transport sector and the community in public will see a change in fears, and of course, that's what we really want. We have been struggling for nine years, and uh, we got a small pittance um, in 2021. Uh, it was a hit below the bell, so we were still waiting. Our operational cost is 65% um, in the deficit, and of course, we really want this tomorrow morning. But we, we understand the working of the government and the special committee, and so we will hold a little bit longer um, for this um, announcement by the minister. Rastafari community calls for written national policy on free display of locks. The Rastafarian committee is further calling for the establishment of a written national policy which includes the free display of locks in the workplace. This comes after the education minister announced that Rastafarian students will no longer be required to wear tams or head coverings in schools in an effort to end the discrimination against the group. The policy is pending implementation in schools. Pamela Williams, a member of the Rastafari Coral Gardens Benevolent Society, says that while Rastafarians welcome the move, the government must go a step further and commit to an overhaul of existing policy procedures. She says that too often, workers are required to conform to repressive corporate grooming policies. We have been pressing the government to, to uh, develop a written policy in respect of the wearing of locks and beard at the workplace and in schools. So the Ministry of Education is, has made the announcement. I hope an, a, a new administration would not in any way change that announcement. So that is why we have been asking for a written policy on, 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 on those issues. So as I say, it is heartening, encouraging, but I think the government should go a step further. They, they could be required to pay some money to the victims to compensate for the, the, the trauma that they have put them through, you know? And as I say, there needs to be a, a, an agency to, to which the persons can go to report instances of um, victimization in that regard. What we, are required, what we are requesting is a special court, just like how you have traffic court, where, you know, traffic offenses are dealt with promptly and, and quickly, you know. To, we want to have some kind of system that does not have to go through the regular court system and, um, we, and, and, per, and for the perpetrators to know that so that they will, be, they will think twice before they take that kind of action. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.